I will avenge you, father. I will save you, mother. I will kill you, Fjolnir. Oof. This movie is badass, and audiences seem to think that's all it was going to be. When they headed into it, it was advertised almost like a Viking second coming of Gladiator, and there is plenty of movies I would compare it to long before I'd compare it to Gladiator. Robert Eggers directed this, so if you've seen any of his other films, you would kind of know what you're getting into here. And although this is definitely a much more accessible one of his movies, it's slightly mainstream or slightly more mainstream I suppose than his other two films it still seemed to be deemed a little too art house for the casual cinema goer it didn't do very well at the box office as a matter of fact it bombed. it really bombed uh, the last figure I saw was 23 million made uh, but that's expected to go into the 30 millions now considering the budget was 90 million and you know usually for a movie to make a profit it has to double its budget because its budget doesn't factor in advertising it needed to make you know upwards of 200 million to make a profit which begs the question why did this movie flop so hard at the box office now uh, for anyone who you know is a long time subscriber or a new subscriber you'll know that i do a lot of back and forth with the audience at the start of the video but audience retention's kind of in the mud so i'm going to do that at the end so, you know, if you're new around here, please do subscribe and like the video. But any of my longtime subscribers, don't worry, we'll have a chat at the end. Now, this is going to be a bit of a review, but I'm also going to analyze why did it flop so hard. I mean, his other two movies, Robert Eggers, that is, The Witch and The Lighthouse, both kind of comfortably made their money back. One in The Witch really made its money back, and The Lighthouse also made its money back, you know, just, I suppose, not as emphatically. And, yeah, the difference, obviously, being the budget. I believe The Witch and The Lighthouse probably combined was about a 15 million budget for the two movies. Um, whereas, you know, 90 million for one movie is a pretty big risk from the studio. Now, I am glad they took that risk myself uh, because I loved this movie. It is a certified top 10 movie of the year for me in my end of the year list, which at this point is probably looking like a top 20, to be honest, because I've lost. I've liked a lot of movies I've seen this year. It's definitely up there. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's high. It's very, very high. Uh, you'd know if you followed my letterbox. My my 2022 list is public at the minute, which probably isn't a smart call because then you won't have to watch my list. But yeah, I mean, he collaborated with uh, longtime cinematographer uh, Yaren Blaschk. I want to say that's how you pronounce it. And this movie looks beautiful. The, the set design is also very good, I like the costumes, but yeah, the lighting is excellent. I'm not going to spoil anything just yet, I will get into spoilers. But just the, the very feel of this movie, both to look at and the, the mythology intertwined in it, and the, the language used, and the accents, and the acting, it feels very of its time, which is in and around, I can't remember exactly, but I believe it's the 9th century. Uh, it starts off at Norway, and then we go to Ukraine, and then we go to Iceland. I think it's Ukraine in between the two. Could be wrong. It's called the land of the Rus, uh, but I don't think it is Russia. I think it is Ukraine where they are. Now, this is it gonna get nominated for Oscars. Uh, well, it does kind of harken back for me anyway to The Last Duel. Not as a movie, but just the fact that it was a big time period epic that flopped yeah it flopped at the box office let's not beat around the bush it did and so did the last jewel and i really liked the last jewel and you know it certainly didn't get nominated for oscars uh but i do think the northman is more likely to especially nicole kidman everyone's raving about her performance uh, she is outstanding in this and you know bjork has a, a fantastic cameo and what we see of willem dafoe in this movie is amazing i thought ethan hawk was very good but for me, you know, Anya Taylor-Joy and Alexander Skarsgård, the uh, the two most prominent on-screen figures in this movie, are both fantastic. I think everyone delivered with their acting in this movie, 100%. But you know, acting alone isn't going to get a movie over the line when it comes to the box office. But yeah, I'd have to say Alexander Skarsgård in particular, he gives this really like primitive, almost beastly performance. He's Amleth the Beowulf. That's a badass character. Now, he's only referred to as the bear wolf once in the whole movie. He's more referred to as just a, a wolf. You know, he, he howls with wolves. You know, when he's out here pillaging villages. Bars. <laughs> oh! 
Uh, he has the, the wolf's head over his head, almost like a headdress. And again, you know, iconic characters, because Amleth the bear wolf, as I will refer to him forever, is a badass, iconic character already for me. So where did this fall short? For me as a movie, it just didn't. To be honest, I really, really liked this. I like Robert Eggers, and I really like this. It's an amazing movie, but I suppose where it fell short at the box office was probably down to its marketing. Now, as I said, it was advertised as this big epic, uh, and just, you know, like a, a clean-cut epic, which, you know, if you know Robert Eggers, you would know that it's not going to be that, but, you know... Robert Eggers has two films under his belt, and although, you know, to a, f a movie fanatic, they are, like, quite big films, you know, the average cinema-goer is probably not going to really think that the director is going to have this massive impact compared to what the trailer has shown. The trailer shows them basically what the studio wants people to think it is, and I suppose the idea was, well, we'll trick them almost, not really, but we'll, we'll convince them to come in because they know there's going to be you know, some Viking pillaging and some some big scary dudes. And we'll we'll kinda hit them with the mythology and the Robert Eggersness and the the art housey uh, framing of the movie and the mythology and the supernatural elements. We'll hit them with that when they get there. And hopefully they like it. Hopefully it just sticks the landing. And in fairness, that's a pretty big thing to just like shock someone with. Like if someone's taken their now it's rated R. I was going to say someone takes their kids to this. In America, it's really rated R, so uh, they shouldn't be taking their kids to this. But, you know, if someone's taking someone to this on a date, say, and they're like, right, we'll just watch this Viking movie. It doesn't sound like it's going to be the most intellectual experience where you have to keep your brain switched on at all times and follow the story. It feels like it's going to be, you know, Braveheart, but, you know, in Scandinavia. And that's not what it is. So... I can understand why people who don't know who Robert Eggers is and what his catalogue is and what this movie's actually about and the, the mythology that it's based upon. I can understand why they were kind of pissed. I mean, it's even got really good reviews and, you know, obviously good reviews doesn't correlate into good performance at the box office. But I mean, just the, the very fundamentals of this movie, like the shots where the characters are say riding on horseback and they're just like this much of the frame and the landscape dominates the frame or a mountain or a volcano or the sky dominates the frame almost like a, the gods are looking down on them because they talk about the gods quite a bit in this movie it's beautiful this movie is so amazing and like there's some badass stuff in there don't get me wrong there's some proper badass stuff it's set in chapters and i believe the chapter is called the night the blade feeds where spoiler alert uh, alexander skarsgård's character amleth the bear wolf uh night by night slaughters these people in this village like sheep like he is the wolf hunting the sheep because he's trying to get to the shepherd i saw that in someone else's review kino corner i think it was i think it was kino corner shout out i'm not i'm not here to steal ideas or anything but i thought that was a really good idea that he's a he's a wolf attacking a village of sheep or you know a, at this point they're basically just a field of sheep because you know it's the ninth century and you know he does get uh, addressed as a wolf in sheep's clothing by Anya Taylor Joy it there's a lot of symbolism and imagery that's recurring in this that the wolf imagery is very much one of them now from a from a plotline point of view I thoroughly enjoyed this I was really engrossed uh, by the mythology and I'm not a big mythology guy for me this is gonna get some hate I feel for me, I, I really liked The Lighthouse, I really liked it, but because I knew nothing about any of the mythology that it was uh, supposedly tapping into, it, that was kind of lost on me, uh, at least on first viewing. So, because this was definitely more accessible than The Lighthouse, for me anyway, I was just instantly like, yep, yeah, no, this is amazing, I'm really interested. The stuff about the gods, about Freya, about... Odin I found it really fascinating and the supernatural elements you know it was kind of what I wanted the Green Knight to be in a sense where you know he's he's not a great person is Amleth he's he's on a path he wants to he really 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 wants to get to the end of this path because he has something he just has to do kind of to prove it to himself that his life has been worth living up until this point 
and you know along the way he, he finds some stuff out about himself you know it's it's a tale as old as time for me i just thought the mythology in all this the plot the the structure of the movie the pacing it just all ticked every box like i really did enjoy this this is one of my favorite movies of the 2020s we'll say because it's fantastic i loved the northman like i am raving about it and i implore you when it comes out on blu-ray or uh, streaming well, rent i suppose uh, rental or a dvd spend some money on this please because i know you're not gonna buy a t-shirt but buy the dvd if you if you still have a dvd collection like myself i could do a video about that if you want um but yeah buy it because this movie deserves it deserves so much more it does now the budget is really bloated uh that was probably a risk that well it's been proven it wasn't a risk worth taking but for me i think this movie deserves so much more than what it got it deserves more than 30 million at the box office it deserves more than fan reactions are kind of mixed it deserves to be cherished the northman is a great movie it, for me i i didn't even realize it bombed at the box office until after i saw it in my re initial review for my what i watched this month i have at the end this is a triumph for cinema well, i was fucking wrong because <laughs> you know it, it failed but for me i still think it's a triumph for cinema i think this movie is amazing and i really recommend it the northman is top top tier and yeah, please watch it. Give it some support because it did bomb at the box office. It wasn't advertised very well. Let's face it, the uh, the multiple heads in a poster thing can fuck right off because it draws in your casual audience. And you know, when it's something like this, it's gonna disappoint people. It is, it's not gonna disappoint people all the time. Some people are just gonna get shocked by it, to be honest, because yeah, this isn't your standard lots of heads on a poster movie. Uh, which is its own subgenre. Uh, also, big banger Revenge of the Sith off that final fight, but in the best way possible. God, uh, such a badass fight scene, and the last frame of that is so good. Yeah, The Northman. Top tier movie. Absolutely recommend it. If it's still in cinemas near you, go see it. Uh, it's just not in my local one anymore, but you know, if it's in your local cinema, go watch it. It's really good. Northman's class. Now, thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, I realize that. Uh, I didn't upload last week, obviously, but I did say I wouldn't because, you know, I had my last assignments of the year. Now, I'm going to get this out, hopefully, you know, sometime this week, hopefully tomorrow, maybe. Could be tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you when I'm filming this because then you'll know if I succeeded or failed there. Uh, but I'm hoping to get this out by tomorrow. And yeah, I have a script written for another video, but I don't know if I want to put it out yet. Um, it's a character study. I'm... Tr I'm considering going into some video essays, but I'm not certain because, you know, although I love writing and, you know, I study English, I still feel like there's a, a little work to do there before I go into full-blown video essays. So, yeah, there will be videos soon. I have plenty in mind. And if you have any suggestions, they are more than welcome. If you don't feel comfortable sending them in the comments, just send us a message. But, you know, comments really do push these videos quite a bit. Uh, thank you so much for watching, as I said. And if you're new around here and you've stuck around this late, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. <laughs> I'm trying to hit 1K soon. I keep saying that, and then I like have to stop making videos for a week or two because of college. But I really, really do want to hit 1K. Really do. Right. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon. I, I really will. Cheers, guys.